So you have a few videos that you shared with family, friends, and whoever else happens along and sees what you are posting. Now you find that you're making a little money on it from those ad revenues. Perhaps an unintended consequence, that happened to me. Now you wonder about or realize that you are required to pay taxes on that. Or perhaps you became aware of how some sellers are making a pretty good living as a YouTube content provider and you want a part of that action. So you created a channel and now it's making some money. Hi, I'm Gary and welcome to Tax Bulldog for the best thoughts and ideas for trimming your taxes. Now this is mid-February 2018 and people in business are thinking about their taxes. In this video, I'm going to discuss the tax consequences of your YouTube revenue. Is it taxable? How much of it is taxable? How can I reduce the tax on it? And how do I report it? Now, along the way here, I'll give some references to information that is easily available here on YouTube, the web, and at the IRS. Now, this is not legal advice. This is general in nature, as all situations, circumstances, and nuances cannot be encompassed in a video. This is relative to the tax years as of the production of this video. If you have any complications to your situation, consult a tax professional. I'll see the description below for some important disclosures you're going to need to know. Also, many links to additional tax information. Now, this is relative to taxes in the United States only. Now, whether you are a hobbyist, a freelancer, doing a side hustle, gig, muse, or a full-time business, YouTube revenue is all reportable as taxable income. Then from that, you get to subtract your expenses. Now, one of the questions is, what form of business to select? You'll probably want to consult a tax professional or a business attorney. It will be well worth the fee. There are basically eight forms of businesses to choose from. One is a sole proprietor. That is the simplest. Two is a general partnership. Three is a limited partnership. And four is a limited liability company, known as an LLC. And you have one as a single member. Five, you have an LLC with multiple members. Six, you have an LLC treated as a corporation. Well, seven, you have a C corporation that's known as a regular corporation. Eight is an S corporation, and that's a pass-through tax entity of the owners. Now, each of these have their unique characteristics and reasons for choosing one. How you report your income producing activity on your taxes depends on the business form that you choose. Is your income producing activity a hobby or a for-profit business? If a hobby, your expenses cannot exceed your income. If it does, it's a loss and you cannot deduct a loss on a hobby activity. A hobby is when you do something that you get a personal satisfaction from it and you make some money. That could be things like crafts. This protects you from paying taxes on sales from your hobby so you don't have to pay income taxes on your gross sales. You get to subtract your expenses. I'll put a quick article about this in the description below. Now, if you are running your income producing activity with the intent to make a profit, then you get to deduct expenses, even those that exceed your income, creating a loss. Now, if you have a loss, that can offset other income you may have, such as your regular day job or other businesses. However, be aware that if you claim losses for more than three years, that may raise a red flag with the IRS. Now as for income, anyone who pays you, including YouTube, will send you a form 1099 miscellaneous when you have income of $600 or more. That is what the law requires. Some payers will send you a form 1099 miscellaneous even for lesser amounts as they try to play on the safe side of reporting requirements. Even if you don't receive a form 1099 miscellaneous, you are still responsible to report all your income relative to your income producing activity, regardless of how little it may be. Also taxable is income from advertisers, collaborative resources, commissions, and fees from third parties and sellers who pay you for linking to their products. The IRS requires you to keep records that clearly shows your income and expenses. See the link in the description below for the IRS webpage on record keeping. Now for tracking income, keep a record of all income that comes into your hands. Some income and records come to you via electronic methods. You may keep a simple list that details the date, where it is from, what it is for, and the amount. And be sure to keep a copy of the source documents. Now for tracking expenses, they must be ordinary and necessary and relative to the income producing activity. Now any expense you incur that is relative to, helps, or is necessary to produce income is a deduction. 
don't hold back or be afraid to deduct a legitimate expense deduction. Now for depreciation and amortization, we have what's called a Section 179 deduction that allows you to expense tangible assets, which are assets that have a physical presence, such as equipment and real estate. You get to deduct this in a single year rather than over multiple years. The allowance for 2017 is $510,000 and $1 million for 2018. That's a big increase when it has been low and stagnant for a lot of years. The caveats to that is that there is no deduction for the assets in the future to offset future income. Also, if the asset is disposed of prematurely before its useful life for depreciation purposes, part of that Section 179 deduction may have to be recaptured and a tax paid on it. Now for depreciation, that's an expense that is deducted each year over the useful life of the asset. That could be like three to five years or more. This gives deductions against future income instead of immediately as the Section 179 deduction does. Now for amortization, this covers a couple of things. Typically, intangible assets, which are assets that do not have a physical presence, such as equipment and real estate. This covers costs of things like business startup costs, patents, copyrights, etc. Just to name a few. These are typically deducted or amortized over five years. These do not qualify for the Section 179 deduction. As for your home office space, studio, or shop deduction, that is the space your business activity occupies and uses in your home. It must be used regularly and exclusively for your business activity. And that doesn't have to be a separate room. It just needs to be separated from other personal parts of the home. Now for accounting software or keeping your books manually, there are some inexpensive accounting programs available. The most widely known is QuickBooks. That is usually easy enough to use without needing a degree in accounting. You may also do it very cheaply with ledger sheets. So long as you can meet the record keeping requirements of the IRS. See the link below on that. You may also hire a bookkeeper to keep your records for you. That is a lot less expensive than a CPA or other licensed accounting professionals. Bookkeepers are very good, just the same. Some bookkeepers also prepare taxes. But should you use tax preparation software or a tax professional? There are a number of inexpensive software programs that can help you prepare your taxes. The most widely known is TurboTax, Tax Act, Tax Layer, and some others. Just Google tax preparation software. Now, taxes can be subject to misinterpretation. An error can cost you money. If you have any complexity to your business or situation, you may want to hire a licensed tax professional. Typically, they are enrolled agents who are licensed by the U.S. Treasury, CPAs who are licensed by their state, and then you have attorneys who are licensed by their state. Now for estimated taxes, you are supposed to pay estimated taxes at least quarterly. If you don't or you underpay them, there is a penalty and interest on the underpaid portion. Now how to estimate what to pay? If this is your first year in business or your income producing activity, you don't have a history to go by to calculate your taxes as would those who have been around for some years. As a rule of thumb, I recommend putting aside 10% of your gross revenues for estimated taxes. Perhaps another 2 or 3 percent if your state has an income tax. But it's hard to estimate your taxes until you have three years of business under your belt. Then you should have a good basis of what your business will do. But that can change as trends, markets, and the economy does. So you need to be aware of that and be flexible. Now for paying your estimated taxes, you can pay as frequently as you like. It's not just a quarterly thing. You can pay them weekly if you like. That is easier than a large sum quarterly and you have less chance of accidentally spending the tax money on other things and coming up short on taxes. I would recommend putting money for taxes aside in a separate account. Not to be touched except to pay taxes. Now you can pay online direct to the IRS at the links in the description below. States have their websites where you can do this also. These are free and there's no fee and you have full options to control your payments. If you haven't already, I highly recommend that you set up an account on the IRS's site at www.eftps.gov. I'll put the link below. This is a secure IRS site. You have full control of your payments. You can direct what your payment goes to for any tax type, how much is to be paid, on what date in the future it is to be paid, and you can change or cancel payments up to 24 hours before the payment was scheduled to be made. 
Now consider your entire tax picture. How does it impact everything and your day job or main source of livelihood? These all tie together and impact each other. YouTube adds to your business, if it may not already be your primary income. And everything else adds to your total tax picture. So don't leave out any sources of income, regardless of how small it may be. If related to your income producing activity, it comes under the umbrella of that activity. So in summary, what I covered is, all sources of income and an income producing activity are taxable. Select your form of business carefully as that will have an impact on your tax picture. Is it a hobby or a for-profit business? Accounting for income and expenses to meet IRS requirements, accounting and tax preparation software, or hiring a professional, and paying estimated tax payments. So in closing, thank you for watching this video. I have many links in the description below for more information for you. If you like this and learned something from it, please give me a like and share it with your family, friends, and colleagues. To see what I may come up with in the future, please subscribe and be sure to hit that bell icon so you won't miss out on any important information. Now here are some resources. TaxBulldog.com. This is my website with many resources and information to help you. Slash IRS Back Taxes book at this link. This is a book I wrote to help taxpayers settle crippling tax debt. Thank you.